Hey guys, it's Yuta. So many people are wondering why the number of Japan's confirmed cases is low, even though Japan doesn't seem to be doing much. And one of the obvious reasons is that the number of tests in Japan is relatively small. So there are many more cases that we don't know. But this applies to many countries to varying extent because we can't possibly test all the people. Our healthcare resource and test capacity is limited. We can't detect all the outstanding cases and we always have to make a guess. And since different countries have a different testing scheme, different countries' confirmed cases aren't necessarily directly comparable. But one thing you can pay attention to is the healthcare system. Because Japan's healthcare system hasn't been severely overwhelmed like in Italy as of today so far because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And another thing is that the number of daily deaths are low and has been stable. So that's another thing to consider. Having said that, this is just my non-expert opinion, so please take it with a grain of salt. But there's another important aspect of the question why Japan doesn't have many cases. Because this question implies why Japan doesn't have many cases despite the fact that Japan doesn't seem to be doing a lot. And it's understandable since we are not talking a lot about social distancing or self-quarantine at least until last week when the governor of Tokyo asked us to stay at home. But the truth is, Japan has been doing something. But I noticed that many people outside Japan are not aware of what Japan has been doing. So that's what we are going to talk about in this video. But first, let me just clarify something. Because some people assume that when I explain something about Japan, I'm defending the system, which isn't necessarily the case because explaining and understanding something isn't the same as agreeing or defending something. And if you ask for my opinion, I don't think Japan is doing enough. But if you don't understand something, how are you supposed to criticize it constructively? So it's important to understand something before criticizing it. Let me explain. Now, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare published an updated document about their measures on 28th March. And the content is in line with what Japan has been doing so far. And there's an important message that they have been sending, which is to avoid places that meet these three conditions. 1. Poor ventilation. 2. Tightly packed crowd. 3. Talking while being close to each other. So the government has been promoting this advice, like you see in this poster, and also the media has been talking about it. And the governor of Tokyo, when she had a conference last Wednesday, she also talked about this. So this advice is widely accepted in Japan. And this is based on the research that a team of specialists in Japan have conducted. And their report is accessible in PDF. But they basically analyzed mass infections and they realized that mass infections happened in places that met these three conditions. And if you take a look at the conditions, this actually explains why mass infections are not happening in Japan's trains. Because even though the first two conditions apply to trains, because trains are a poorly ventilated place where you can expect a tight crowd, the third condition doesn't apply in Japan because in trains in Japan, most people are quiet. They don't even talk on the phone because it's forbidden. And the reason that they're focusing on mass infections is that they think it's a very effective way of slowing down the spread. This is the idea that 80% of the infected people actually don't spread the virus, where, whereas 20% of the people spread the virus to many people. And you can see an example on the government's website. Take a look at this. This is based on the 110 confirmed cases in Japan as of February 26th. This shows that most people who haven't been to places with poor ventilation didn't spread the virus at all. And because of this, Japan's specialist team is focusing on identifying clusters of infected people and isolate them. And since our resource is limited, they chose to focus on an efficient way of handling the spread. So they're not necessarily trying to completely stop the spread. The idea is if the infected people spread the virus on average to less than one person, this will eventually die down. 
So that's the idea. That's the basic strategy in Japan as of today. Obviously, on top of this, people are told to wear masks if they are sick and wash their hands. But there's nothing original about this advice. And also, we closed the school in February. Although the government hasn't decided if they will reopen the school soon or not. Of course, we can't really say for sure if the seemingly low number of cases in Japan is a direct result of the strategy. And I'm not trying to prove causation here. In fact, I want to mention that just because we have been relatively okay so far, it doesn't mean we will be okay tomorrow. And to be honest, I think there's a lot of problems with this strategy. So let's talk about them. And since I don't have any expertise in epidemiology. I can't really comment from an epidemiological perspective, but I can say something from a behavioral perspective because there's an obvious behavioral problem with this, which is this. Not everybody follows this advice of avoiding poorly ventilated and tightly packed places where people are talking to each other. There are always people who don't follow advice, such as our politicians. And you can also see Japanese people going to a poorly ventilated izakaya and talk loudly. So this doesn't help. And I have the impression that Japanese people had been less careful in early March. You might have seen Japanese people going to crowded places on social media. It is very concerning that the daily numbers of confirmed cases in Tokyo seem to be increasing significantly lately. In fact, the Japanese specialist also acknowledged that in countries where they saw rapid growth, Japan's kind of strategy wasn't enough. So they had to resort to more drastic measures that restrict people's movements significantly. And I really hope that won't happen in Japan. But I'm not super optimistic. And it's sad because if everybody followed the advice, we could maybe pull off the strategy and we wouldn't have to do something drastic like lockdowns. Even if the strategy is sound, if we didn't implement it correctly, it wouldn't work. So that's how I see it today. But things are changing fast and it's very important to stay informed. And most information in Japan is in Japanese. So if you want to learn Japanese with me, I can teach you the kind of Japanese that Japanese people actually speak today because textbooks tend to teach you a natural old fashioned Japanese. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Yuta. Alright, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.